Hello, this is Darren. And this is Paige. And this is Where's, Where's the, the lemonade? lemonade? Where we talk about what happens when life throws you lemons. Make some lemonade? Uh, maybe. Some weeks it's lemon squares. Yeah, some weeks it's just lemons. Yep. <laughs> On today's episode, we're going to talk about being accepted into the extended family. The good, the bad, and the ugly. You know, blending families is not just you and your kids. Nope. No, it also includes your siblings and your parents as well. Yeah, yeah. And that can be um, somewhat of a challenge. Well, yeah, it can be a a really big challenge, especially depending on uh, how close-knit your family is. Uh, Hopefully you're not all living in the same house together. That would be even more difficult. Yes, it would. It's different for each family, too. The family dynamics, where you fit in the family... All those things play an important role in how uh, your siblings are going to accept your your new uh, spouse. Yeah, and your history, right? Your history with your ex is still there, but yet your ex isn't there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, exa- exactly. And we, we had an opportunity. Um, uh, my dad had his 80th birthday, so we had all of my siblings together. And we actually talked to them about this. We did. And we did. it was a very frank and open discussion. Uh, it it was actually really good because we got to find out what they were feeling about um, introducing Paige into their lives because that's part of their lives too. Yeah, because family dynamics are different. You, you know, your family reacted very differently than my family. And Absolutely. We're, and and we, we believe that that somewhat has to do with our placement in the family and then it also just has to do with personalities Person- and, and family dynamics. Yep. All those things have a role. So today we're going to talk about how do you navigate that, yep. understand that, the pitfalls that we ran into, um, the things we learned from it. It's now been uh, eight years uh, right. since uh, we've introduced you to my family and I've been introduced to your family. So yep. it's fun uh, to look back and see, ooh, we should have done something different here. Or, right. man, why were they being so so mean or whatever it was. So uh, that's what we're going to explore today. Let's do it. Okay, so first thing uh, to understand the difference between Paige's family and my family is there are six kids in my family and there are four in your family. Yep. So the size of the family does matter. And I was the baby by many years. I, you know, my next sibling is seven and a half years older than me. So I was the spoiled, protected baby in the family. So by the time you were married the first time, your, all your siblings already had kids. Yeah, except for my one sister who's except never married. But yeah, my other two siblings, yeah, had been <sighs> married and had kids. Right. So that's very different than my family. My family, I'm a third. I have three younger siblings. Um, and uh, so when I got married the first time, they were still uh, teenagers in the house, so they grew up knowing my first wife as a, a sibling, right? Basically, you poor thing, you were a middle child. I know it's middle children, neglected, ne- neglected, all that. <laughs> absolutely. But knowing and understanding that, you can understand the dynamics in the family are going to be a little bit different as well. Yep. So I mean, that's that's just part of what you have to deal with. My my family was uh, actually pretty protective. They were. They were. They were. But yours was too, in a different way. How so? Well, I mean, they went and ran Google on me almost immediately. Oh, I think your family did. I mean, I think oh, my family does did that. too. Yeah. It was funny. In fact, yeah. So I was dating you, and we were starting to get serious. And my family came into town because I don't live by my family. So my parents and uh, my two sisters came into town, and they were staying with me. And I had to go to work, and I came back home, and they were like, Paige, have you Googled Darren before? And I'm like, actually, no, I haven't, which they thought was crazy. And they were, they'd been, you know, looking at Facebook and Google, and they, they knew all about you. Yeah, oh, yeah. And, <laughs> and yeah, my, my siblings knew all about you, too. Um, but we, we went a little deeper than just Facebook and Google. We, we had people finders, and I can tell you everything that... Uh, about what was going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so could my siblings. And so why do you think they do that? Um, I don't know. I think that your family was um, really concerned and 
I guess, I don't know why they were, were more concerned than my family. I think because your sister had gone through a divorce and she had dated people, right? And it, yeah, and some of those people ended up being creepers. Right. So I think that they had a different um, outlook on the whole thing than with my family. My family was... Oh my goodness, here's Darren. He's this great guy. He loves our sister slash daughter and he's going to take care of her and her kids. And he's going to, you know, and so they were like, yes, come, we love you. Um, and my and family you. was a little more hesitant because of some experiences that had happened with my older sister. Right. Well, and, and also I think my family were in each other's business pretty heavily. So right. It's part well, of being in my family. That's, and you had lived, you and your ex- um, before you were obviously divorced, you lived with your parents um, for, for about six months. Right, yeah. six months. And your your siblings live right around there. So you guys were all up in. Yeah, we were all up in their business and they saw my marriage kind of fall apart. Right. Firsthand. So right. and they saw how much pain I was in. Right. So I think they were they were pretty protective, especially my older sister. She's always been kind of that overprotective older sister that we all love. Right. Um, uh, thanks, Dylene, for always being there for me. But that also means that you all you want to protect me and my kids. And so those two different dynamics were uh, played out very different in, in the two families. They were. I felt um, the hesitation very much so in your family. So let's let's tell the first story. So I had met one of your siblings here at the house. She was in town for something. I met her just one on one. Yeah, and that was actually pretty good. That was great. And she was like your marketing um, manager. She was like, he's a great guy. <laughs> yeah. You should she's, she's my just younger sister, another middle child. Yes. Us, us middle children, way to go, Dana. Yeah. Stick, she, stick together. She was selling you for sure. She was like, <laughs> and look, he has good teeth. And no, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> she was, she was, she was selling you hard. And but that was good to get to know her just one on one. And then the next time I met the rest of your family was at uh, the wedding of your nephew. Yeah, the oldest nephew, the first one to get married. Yep. And so I showed up um, where they were kind of doing wedding festivities because they were going to take a family picture. And you, well, even though we weren't really part, we ha really had nothing to do with the wedding. Um, but we were engaged at the time. We were engaged. And you wanted me and my kids to show up for this picture. And so we show up. And there was a little, <laughs> a little bit of a, a discourse um, on a decision that had to be made whether Paige and her kids would be in that family picture. Or not. I was not allowed to be in the family yeah, picture. Exactly, and and there was some contention not just with me but with uh, some of my siblings and my mom. Kind of blew up, but my mom did something brilliant at that time. That's when she. Um, had Jake kiss her on the forehead. Yes, yeah, she gave exactly. Jake the the hundred. He gave her a hundred dollars for kissing yeah. her on the forehead, which is a tradition that we have. You got to listen to our podcast on traditions to hear that whole story. Right. So it it turned out to be a little bit of a ten, uh, tense filled time, I guess. Is oh, tension. it was it was yeah. tense filled because not because I was I wasn't that upset that I wasn't in the picture. That actually wasn't what is what I was upset about. No, you saw the dynamics of me wanting my family to accept you yeah. at that point. In time. And it just, you, that situation was not handled well. I mean, because no, you wasn't. didn't know, you thought, oh, my family's going to be mm -hmm. fine with Paige and her kids being in the picture. And then we show up and here it is, awkward, because they're yeah. like, nope, you're not going to be in the picture. And so I got in the car with my kids and we took off and you're trying to follow me. And it was, it was a little dramatic. Yeah, but we got through <laughs> it. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> but we talked to your siblings about this, actually, when we were just with them in Vegas last weekend. I, and we did. And it turns out there's some history there. I mean, um, there was someone that was dating uh, my sister and he ended up being in a family picture and ended up not being part of the family. So right. we have a family reunion with family pictures with this guy in there that um, is not part of the family. So right. there was just this cautiousness. And I understand that. I understand. That. In fact, my sister, her... Her daughter was engaged to somebody that was in a family, a Christmas card, and they ended up not getting married. So it wasn't not being in the picture. It no, was it was just, just how I handled it, handled the whole situation. Yes, it was just the handling of the situation that that uh, that didn't go well. But but yeah, so. So just I guess, I mean, part of that is be prepared when you're introducing your new spouse to your siblings that it may not go all perfect. And the reason why is because there's history there. 
There's um, history with your former spouse there. There's just a lot that you have to deal with that is different than your kids. Because right. your siblings don't have to accept your new spouse. Your kids, eventually, they have to live with them. So there has to be some level of acceptance. So it's right. very different. It is very different. But coming into a new family, you want that acceptance. You oh, want them to welcome you with open arms. And, you know, because some of your your uh, siblings were hesitant, it was hard for me. And it made me really, it hurt me. And I was sad and, and then mad and, you know, all those all those great feelings. Yeah, great. <laughs> exactly how you want to be brought into a new family. Now, my experience coming into Paige's family was completely different. They they liked me right away. I think um, your dad is very interesting. I'm I'm pretty much a traditionalist, but so I asked your dad if I could marry you. Right. And um, and your dad uh, likes to cry a lot, kind of like me a little bit. And mm -hmm. uh, big teddy and bear. Big teddy bear. And he just told me, well, I know you'll take care of my daughter. And so he gave me his blessing, yeah, uh, which was uh, actually really cool. So, um, but yeah, that was very different. And I think they saw me as someone that could actually take care of. of right, age. right, right, right. And I, my, like I said, my family wasn't in proximity close. So they only heard from me what I chose to tell them about the situation where your family was actually seeing yeah, she the never situation. Told them, yeah, she never told them about the fights. Or... No, 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 no. They know, very, I, I mean, to this day, I haven't told them probably a quarter of what really went on, but I, you know. In your first marriage. In my first marriage, because yeah. they just don't, they don't need to know all the, all the nitty gritty, but your family all saw it all firsthand. So that's they, they did different. see it firsthand. And my family were a lot more open with each other. Um, I remember when, uh, my brothers and I and our wives were all pregnant at the same time. Um, my dad kind of laughed at it and goes, I don't know how you guys do it. Do you know when each other's wives are ovulating? We go, yeah, I think we kind of do, dad. And he goes, that's really weird. <laughs> that is weird. Yeah, that is weird. Um, <laughs> we, were, we were that close. Right. Um, so, and with that proximity becomes, you know, more protection and more worrying about each right. other, which we do a lot. And one of the things that when we were talking with your siblings in Vegas, um, it was funny. We were talking about how this we were going to be doing this episode. And I was telling the your family about it. And um, our one sister-in-law said, Rebecca, yeah. Rebecca, she was saying how, you know, yeah, that, you know, they vacationed with your ex and, you know, we're pregnant together and just did lots of things together. Yeah, there's 20 years of history. Yeah, there. 20 years of history. And then she says to me, Paige, I like you just as much as I liked her. And I was like, just as much. <laughs> it was just, pretty funny. Just as much. <laughs> but, you know, I, was, want, I want to be liked more. <laughs> that was really funny, <laughs> but extremely insightful. It was. It, it kind of opened our eyes up to, oh, yeah. Hey, wait. You know, they spent 20 years getting to know. Right. As part, She was part of the family. She's part of the family. And they loved her. And, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and that doesn't just they end. They commiserated together. Right. And, you that know. doesn't end just because your marriage ends. You know, they don't all of a sudden go, oh, we forgot about all of that. No, not at all. So that, that really opened our eyes um, to some interesting things, right? I mean, um, you have to remember that you've got to put yourself out there. You've got to become part of this family by engaging with those siblings. Right. Um, and it's hard sometimes. It's hard when all of you are talking about trips that you've taken together and, you know, the Disney cruise you all went on and, oh, that was such a great trip. And sometimes it's, it's hard to hear those things, but I still want you to talk about those things, even though it might be hard because that is part of your history. Well, that's part of who, who makes me who I am today. And right. same, same thing with you when right. I hear, oh, do you remember the time at Thanksgiving when, you know, this and this happened or, you know, when we went on this trip together? Yeah, at first, when we first got married, it was really hard for me to hear those things. But now I realize that made you who you are today. Right. I, I love so much. Yep. Yep. Same. Same. I remember you guys looking at photo albums and things. And I, I oh, it's just, like a knife in the it heart. It is. I was just <clears throat> like, oh, man, that's hard. But it, I don't, I, you know, it's important that we don't let those memories go as hard as it is to hear. We have to be the grown ups, right? And even though it's hard to hear, we, it's still part of, who we are. Okay, so from all of the things that we learned by talking to my siblings and talking to your family, what are some of the things that you would say that we learned about 
becoming part of, of the family. So part of the extended family. I yeah. Guess. One of the things, and we already mentioned it was if you can meet um, your new family that you're entering into, if you can meet them more of a, on a one-on-one basis, that is huge. I think it's very overwhelming to walk into a room with, you know, 10 people. Oh, hi. And you know, you're not really being yourself. Yeah. You're here's, just, here's my new spouse. You guys all have to love her like right. I do. And you're, you know, everyone's just kind of being fake, but if you can somehow start off with just a one-on-one, like I did with your sister, Dana, that was so that was much actually, better. That was actually really good for a couple of reasons, not just the one-on-one interaction, but the other dynamics of uh, the relationships between siblings are gone when you're more one-on-one. Right. Right. If Dana was in the room, um, my younger sister and all my other siblings, she behaves very differently than um, if it's just one-on-one with her and I and right. you, um, which is pretty typical, yeah. right? Because anytime my siblings and I get back together, we revert back to when we were 12. <laughs> I mean, that's just how it goes. Yeah, so you do. You revert back to the dynamics. The of dynamics of that family. So it, it is actually really beneficial to get that one-on-one re- um, time. You can build up a relationship. I got yep. that opportunity to do it with your sister, Robin. Yeah. And with Ty Lynn. Right. Um, before and, um, and your brother, Corey, as well. Yeah. Uh, so that was that was uh, really nice. And it was great with Dana. Kind of wish we had more of that with the rest of my siblings. Well, too. and I feel like over the years, I have had that. I've had more one-on-one. We've stayed with, you know, uh, Alan and Ann before, so I've had one-on-one. You know, I, mean, I feel like over the years, we've been able to um, build, build a relationship. Yeah, build them more on a one-on-one basis. But yeah, in the beginning, if you can try, this is our uh, one of mm-hmm. our tips, try to do one-on-one. I think that um, that is a, a fabulous way to do it. Um, another, another tip we have is you have to be patient. Yeah. You have to be patient with being accepted because they may be very cautious. They may be, you know, and you have to be patient with that and you have to keep trying. You can't give up. You can't go, oh man, they're not accepting me. Forget this. You can't, you have to keep well, putting you yourself have to out there. Realize that your spouse has a history with these people. And we'll always have a history with them. You yep. can't divorce your siblings. No. They will always be there. You cannot talk to them for several years, but they're always going to be there. Right. Right. Um, and it's best to have a good relationship with your siblings. Absolutely. Of course. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that patience can take time. Remember, you know, if especially if you were married in your first marriage for a long time, like uh, for both of us, it was over 20 years. Right. Your family has 20 years of history with that ex-spouse. Right. Um, You're not going to jump in in the first year and and get all of that history back. No. It's just not going to happen. It's not. It's not. So you have to be patient and uh, and build those relationships. And then another thing, we we briefly mentioned this before, you've got to be okay with bringing up memories of your, you know, your ex. You've got to be okay with people talking about the trips they went on and... Or when their two kids, you know, threw up in the car together. You right. Know? You've got to swallow your pride because sometimes you don't want to hear it, but you've got to swallow your pride and and start to get to the point where you can enjoy hearing uh, the stories. And it took me a while to get there. I don't know how long I, it took you, it, but... It took me a while too. It took me a while. So, I mean, this is not something that happens overnight at all. This is, this is time and um, lots of um, eating crow, eating crow. Yep. And just figuring out that, you know what, this is the, this is okay to hear it. And well, and I'm at the point now where I like to hear the stories, right? Yes. Right. I'm at the point where, Oh, how did that happen? Cause how did that shape you on who you are today? Right. That I love so much. Well, you have to get, I think we get, we, in the beginning, you're jealous, right? I think, Absolutely. I think it's jealousy yeah, I think and you're so. like, oh, you know, you went on this trip or you did this or, oh, that was so funny that you guys did that. You know what I mean? It's, it's I wish we je- could have that kind of. Right. Yeah. And why didn't we have that kind of moment? Or And so it's this jealousy that you have to get past. And I think with time, you do get past that. So. I, well, and well, it's not just time. It It's your attitude. It's your perception on how you've got to change your perception. Yes. To say, to almost What's the right word? Almost celebrate that um, your spouse had that opportunity to do that fun thing or right. to experience that, even though you weren't there. Well, and I think that's hard. It is hard, and I think the, how you get over that is as you let go of the bitterness and anger and resentment you might have towards your ex. As you let those feelings go, then you can 
you know, be okay with hearing these stories and you can be okay with hearing your ex's story, you know, you can, so I think as you let go of the anger of your own ex and you can, it, it, that's a healing process to be able to hear about your, you know, n- your husband or wife's ex. Right. Now, um, another thing that um, we talked about meeting one-on-one, um, another thing that we, I think is really important is creating things to help build those relationships with those siblings. I know there's a lot going on in your life already with blending kids and, and you've got chaos all over the place, scheduling and, you know, I mean, it's kind of a nightmare, but you've got to spend some time building up the opportunity to meet with the extended family, going to family reunions or going like this, you know, only, only um, adult kids going to my dad's 80th birthday uh, was wonderful, wonderful for all of us, including including yourself. I think it's important that you have to be supportive of your spouse and their family. You've got to be supportive, not, you know, oh, we're not going to go do that or we're not going to spend, you've got to be supportive. And I think that's really healthy for your relationship to be supportive of, you know, your relationship and activities that you're doing with your family. And I would say even encourage. Yes, definitely. Right. Because, you know, I'm, I'm like, well, I have such limited time with my kids now or in us together. Right. I mean, now I'm going to take a weekend and go, you know, be with my siblings. You were very supportive of that, even though it was cutting into time that we had with the kids. Yeah. Because you knew how important that would be in the long term in, in our relationship and right. relationship with my family. And I think actually it was actually, it was really good because yeah. we did kind of open up this can of worms with your family and said, Hey, let's talk about this. Let's talk about when I came into the family and why you were. And they did not gloss over it. They, no, no. In fact, my sister had some really great advice and it was something that she talked about. My sister, Dylene. Oh yeah. She, she gave you when you were dating. When I was dating, she told me this advice and it's actually pretty good um, advice. She said, um, when you're looking for someone, make sure that you find someone financially secure. Eh. That's because Paige was not financially You did not get that from me. But anyway, (laughs) keep going. Keep going. The next one, that you had a strong moral compass and that you believed in your morals and that they were similar to yours. Yes, we had that going for us. Which we had that going for us, which was really great. And the last one was don't date anyone that needs to be rescued emotionally. And that's going to, that's hard. That's a hard one. There's a lot of damaged people out there. Yeah, there are. And we were both damaged. Yes. Right? Yes. Um, but I don't, I don't know if we needed rescue. We needed a little bit of rescue. I was going to say, I think that any person getting remarried is going to need a little bit of rescuing to some extent. But I understand what she's saying. Um, well, and she learned this from the hard knocks of right. dating. And right, going right, through right. This, right. So I understand so. what she's saying, but I think there is a little bit of rescuing that is going to happen um, no matter what. But, I, I think so. Too. But yeah, so did you, maybe you had like one and a half out of three? Or? <laughs> one and a half out of three. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. that's okay. That's okay. Because you know what? That was that was good advice. You know, it you, was, and I took and I took that advice, and then she used that as a ruler to measure you. Right. Right. Uh, which I'm glad. You know, I'm glad I have a sister that's watching out for me. Right. Most of the time. Sorry, yeah. Dailene. Sometimes I don't like it, but I know that you're doing it out of love, and that's that's what's key. Yeah. And you have to be careful what you see on Facebook isn't always what's really happening in real life, right? Because no, I know that right. your family had looked on Facebook and there was a couple pictures of me being silly with my friends when we were on a girl's trip and in front of expensive cars, we were just being silly. And yeah, and they thought, oh, Paige she, is a little... Um, yeah, she's just know, after money. Just and, after money. Yeah, and couldn't be further well, from the Well, you did marry me for my pool. That is true. That is true. I'm so, like, you've got a pool, I'm hooked. I'm yeah, there. That's all it took. You got me. So, and for her, it was uh, the divorce dog that she got. That's a whole nother episode, the divorce dog. <laughs> that thing. is, that is a whole other episode. <laughs> All right. So the funny moment of the week this week um, was something uh, that uh, we tried to do with the kids uh, at her at home, the three amigos. Um, lately, we've been watching America's Got Talent. Yes, the kids are really loving it. It's, for the most part, a family show. There's a few acts we have to fast forward through, but for the most part, it's a good family show, and the kids like all the different um, acts that are on there. And one of the uh, acts that came out was this sacred Rihanna. 
Oh, she's like a scary magician. Yeah, she was like the girl from the ring with this long black hair. She never talked. She was just super creepy and she was a magician. So she carried around a doll. This yeah. Old creepy doll that looked like uh, a doll that, you know, a four year old has tortured right. for years. So she um, she kind of scared the kids a little bit. The kids were just like, ah, whatever. And so we went and we stayed up kind of late that night and we didn't get to bed till 1030 or so. And and it's it was a school night and the kids went up to bed and. I said, we've got to go scare them. I want so to scare the kids. We waited about a half hour till they were. Had supposed, their lights off. Yeah, their lights off, laying in bed. And Paige goes up and scratches on the I door. I was scratching on the door. <laughs> I'm laying in bed going, all right, we'll see what happens. Now they're going to be up for an hour after. We it was funny. Scared. After I scratched on Sam's door like three times yeah. and with no response, I opened his door and I was like, are you scared or anything? And he was like, oh. No, I thought that was just you or Madeline being weird. Oh, <laughs> so. so we're going to have to work on uh, coming up with better ways to scare yeah, the kids. Yeah, Madeline wasn't scared either. She was like, oh, I didn't know what the noise was. I thought it was just maybe, you know, Sam on his wall or whatever. Maybe a rat in the wall. No, So I failed. I've got to work on yeah, scaring we'll, the kids. We'll work on it. So kids, if you hear this podcast, just it's wait. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> If you like today's episode, give us five stars on iTunes, Spotify, Google, and head to Facebook and like us. And check out our blog at wheresthelemonade.org, where you can leave questions and comments. And, but most of all, go out and make some lemonade. You betcha, baby. In our next episode, we're going to talk about transparency and open communication including Facebook, email, text, all of that. It's all so important.